Hey there, welcome to Co3 Debacled. Today we are going to have a look at towing. Uh, the idea of this video is to help you optimize your towing, get more consistency, and hopefully get a faster tow. Uh, there is a little bit of differences in how you should tow a manned versus an unmanned team weapon. Uh, so I will go through the basics and then the advanced uh, bits about towing. I hope you enjoy. So in front of us we have all the tow capable vehicles. Uh, with the 2.5 ton utility truck for both DAC and Wehrmacht. We've got the 250 light carrier also for DAC. For Wehrmacht we have the 251 half track and its medical variant. For the UK we've got the CWT truck and its medical variant. For the US we have the M3 half track and its medical variant. Uh, also capable of towing light team weapons is the Weasel. And in the middle, we have the three vehicles capable of towing unmanned light team weapons, including the Kettenkraut, the Jeep, and the Dingo. Now we're going to take a look at all the team weapons capable of being towed. So starting with our heavy variants that need a vehicle with troop carrying capacity, we've got the Flak 36, the 17 pounder, and the Kanona D105. We've also got the LEIG, the heavy mortar, the Pack Howitzer, the Nebelwerfer, the Flak 30, and the Pack 40, which is representing all of the faction's AT guns. First, we're going to have a look at deployment. So there are two ways that you can deploy, uh, front facing or rear facing. In both instances, you want to hot drop the team weapon. You can do that one of two ways, either by giving a control group to the team weapon itself, or you can select the vehicle and tab and then give a move command. Uh, with control group you are also giving a move command, you just need to be able to select the unit. So first we're going to look at our rear facing hot drop. Uh, so give a reverse command where you want, once you're happy. Select the AT gun and then give a move command. You probably want to stop that move command and then drive away with your half track. You can also cue that command, so we're going to tell the half track to reverse and then go forward. Uh, so once it hits the point that we're happy, uh, we can drop out that AT gun. So it's like the half track, we're going to queue up, reverse, and then go forward. Once we hit that point with our AT, we're going to drop it, and then it's ready to go. So just hitting a stop command as well, so the AT gun will set up straight away. So if you try and give a move command and set up the weapon, it's not going to work. You just have to give a right click move command to get out, and then a quick stop command after. So Otherwise, the team weapon's going to go where you told it to move, like so. So that's why you want to right click and then stop, and then it'll set up at the first uh, vehicle that's in sight. So next we're going to look at front facing deployment. Now, depending on the vehicle, this can be a little bit faster as with the latest pathing updates, some vehicles when they're towing have a little bit of a lurching slow um, speed. So going forward in obviously only exposes your rear armor uh, at the end once you've already deployed the gun so you can get out of there and your AT gun will be the target from then on. So what we're gonna do is shift c command a path that hopefully is fast and turns. Um, and then we want to select the AT gun roughly on the back path so it's still facing the enemy and not too close to the enemy infantry. So we'll just uh, let this play out. So getting ready we can either select and tab. So I've got that or I can just select my control group. And then right about now it's probably ready. We're going to tell it to move. We're going to give that stop command. And then it should be ready to set up. Once it's out, you can just do a setup command, be nice and fast. So now we're going to have a look at a heavy weapon that works much the same for a hot drop. Uh, you do need the weapon selected, so you can do it either by tabbing across, so you have a picture of the flak, or you can give it its own command group by clicking in your unit uh, indicator, and then control 5 or whatever you want it bound to. Um, so you will need it selected to hot drop but uh, you won't give a move command because that's not going to do anything. Uh, you need to hit F or the unload key. So we'll just do that in action now. Um, so once we're at a suitable point, hit F, and then we can tell that truck to move. You'll have the quickest deployment, ready to fire. Uh, if you do it by holding the vehicle and unloading, 
the troops will get out of the truck marginally slower. So hot dropping gives you a little bit more time, but not a lot. So now we're just gonna queue up the reverse and the forward. You almost always want to redeploy your flak because the gun is facing out. Um, otherwise, it's going to take time to turn around, and in that time, you could get rushed. So we'll just let this play out. Um, we're going to select the weapon and then hot drop it pretty much at the end point, um, and it shouldn't slow down the truck at all. Whereas if you use the unload command on the truck, it will pause to unload the gun. And you've also given a new command, so you're going to cancel your shift command movement. So let's have a look. Selecting the gun. Let's hit its zenith. We're going to unload. And the truck's going to move away pretty smoothly. So if you can time it with that uh, pause point, you get no lag. And pretty much we'll start firing straight away. So now we're going to look at loading our team weapons onto the trucks. Uh, now a lot of this is down to setup, so there are tow points for the team weapons, the FLAC 36 you can see very clearly that's the tow point, and then most weapons the tow point will be in a similar position to the rear of the gun. So if you want the fastest possible, you know, pick up for your weapon, you want to keep it about a vehicle, vehicle length away from the gun, uh, so it can just... Uh, path straight in there. The problem is if you have it too far away it might want to turn around and go front facing uh, with the current pathing um, and if you have it too close it won't really align um, so we'll just demo now with the half uh, half track like carrier so it should go straight in nice and quick I'm going to tell it to move away and once those strips are loaded it will get away. Um, so now we're going to demonstrate a bad tow if you have it too far away and you just right click in a hurry. Great tow. Alright, I lied. Now we're going to try and demonstrate a bad tow where the vehicle wants to path forwards into the gun, uh, which can mess things up. Because we haven't had it close enough or lined up, it's going to want to turn around and go front in and then it can collide with the infantry. Um, it just takes a long time turning around, and finally we're ready. Oh, not quite yet. All right, let's get out of there. So, now, I think keeping your vehicle a vehicle length away from your team weapon is probably a little bit too dangerous, because uh, you don't want to lose your light carrier as well. Um, I'll show you maybe a bit more of an ideal situation and how to get a pretty consistent tow on the move, because you want to be able to use your light carrier. Um, so ideally you want your team weapon to be packed up, so you save that animation already, so you can give a little reverse command, the weapon will be packed up, it'll be good to go. Um, so what we're going to do is reverse it to roughly a little bit over a vehicle length away, but while it's still moving, we're going to right click on the team weapon and tell it to tow. So it should do those adjustments on the move. Um, if you shift command and then tow, the vehicle is going to stop and then it's going to have to try and align and sometimes it might go forward in. So we'll just do a demonstration on that now uh, and you'll see those corrections hopefully. So reversing in and then before it stops we're going to tow. That was a good one. So we're straight in. We can shift command away or just right click command and it'll start moving. So now we're going to demonstrate a shift command tow. Um, this can be good if you have the micro it's ideal to do it on the move because um, those adjustments can be made while the vehicle is still moving because if you haven't lined it up um, it might get janky try and go around the front way so uh, leave the gun packed up we're going to reverse in do it with the shift command so you can see what I'm doing we're going to go to about a vehicle length and we're going to tell it to tow uh, and you'll see it stop uh, which does add a little bit more time Stop, then adjust, then it connects, then we're off. So it's a little bit longer, but a little bit less micro. So again, demonstrating in battle, reverse a little bit, big length away, click, adjustment, move, 
We're gonna go, we're gonna go. For this last section, I just want to um, show some common problems with towing and what might be causing it. So, uh, first one is if you have a moving team weapon that can jank it right up. So, you ideally want your team weapon stationary. So, we'll just demo that now. It's moving. Gonna move to it. And then, yeah, it just messes up the half track. It takes extra time, and sometimes it'll even just stop. And stuffed for about 20 seconds so ideally you want the team weapon stopped oh eventually it's gonna complete the animation get out of there so stop the team weapon before you get the tow another problem um and this just is that you can uh, tow the flak 36 with your light carrier um but it can be infantry in your pathing can i make a problem with the tow so if you can push them uh, away with your vehicle once you've already dropped the weapon off, that's ideal. Um, but sometimes just giving a nice straight path and hitting that once you're a vehicle length away should get it nice and smooth. Um, but if we sort of have the infantry in the way and then try and tow, it doesn't like it. So ideally, just path through in a vehicle length away. You'll have a smoother, quicker tow. So now we're going to demonstrate the unmanned. Uh, vehicle's towing ability and why you need to come in from the side to tow it. For some reason the tow points on unmanned are uh, either side of the vehicle. So, so we have a really lucky situation getting closer to the Jeep. We get it unmanned and we want to get away with it. So we're going to reverse to the side of it and while it's still moving, hit the tow, should turn the vehicle and we're good to go. So I'll just demonstrate if you try the manned towing method with an unmanned team weapon, uh, it's going to want to go to the side anyway. It's not super long, but you can get it faster, so yeah, it wants to go to the side. So get it there naturally. Um, it's a bit janky. It doesn't matter which side you approach, either side will work uh, identically. So you're just going to demo that the mortar works in the same way, it's going to want to go to the side, so always want to set the keep up from the side to tow the quickest and now we're seeing what's well, a bit janky just needs to make a few extra rotations to line up with that tow point so the British Indian mortar is a little bit different it's ideal to approach it from the right hand side to get the quickest tow uh, so yeah not the rear or the left you want to approach it from the right uh, if you want the least amount of rotations and janky so both the pack and the LEIG you can approach from both sides so yeah just the British mortar that has that weird so the LEIG does have a tow point on the back without a manned crew, so you can approach that from the rear, but that's the only one that'll work and it will tend towards the side. But you're almost better off just going from the side to get that consistency. So the unmanned heavy weapons work much the same. If you want a quick tow on the 17 pounder, you want to approach from the side uh, so it can complete the animation quicker, otherwise it'll want to if you approach from the rear, it'll want to turn around and, and slow down the attachment. Uh, so the unmanned flak works much the same way as the AT guns, that you want to approach it from the side, because uh, the tow point is different if it doesn't have a crew. Like vehicle length, right click, should line up. Oh god. And then we're going to go. So we'll just try that again. Uh, I think I was a little bit close that time, so we'll wait for that vehicle length so it can adjust. Get the tow ready. And it's a bit cleaner. And away we go. So just demonstrating the unmanned heavy approach for attachment again from the side, the rear, and make it bug out. And sometimes you just get unlucky if the pathing wants to take it on the other side. Um, but yeah, more practice, more consistency, you get those toes. Uh, something to be mindful of with the half tracks, if you just naturally right click it, it's going to want to recrew the weapon. Uh, so make sure you're using the tow weapon command or your E hotkey. Uh, and it's similar for the half track. You want to come in from the side, because it's naturally going to want to try and tow from either side. It'll just take a lot longer. It gets there, but... In the heat of battle, you might lose your half-track that way. So, to summarise, for the best tow, uh, you want to reverse in and be about a vehicle length away. Uh, you want to minimise jank by not having the team weapon moving and ideally not having the crew in the way. 
um, because yeah, you stuff that tow up, your vehicle can be stuck for some time. Uh, if you want to have it nice and close about a vehicle length away and then you, from stationary you can right click it and usually if there's nothing interfering with the pathing you should get a pretty quick tow as well but um, ideally on the move vehicle length away tow and then a shift command forward and get moving as quickly as possible. The British heavy mortar uh, seems to only want to attach from the right hand side so just be aware of that if you want to tow that at a battle but all the other team weapons, if they're unmanned, seem to attach from the left or the right hand side fairly equally and uh, just as quickly. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.